Hello friends, this video on electromagnetic induction part 23 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 22 before going ahead with part 23. Like, let us now look at the sixth problem. It says that a toroidal solenoid with an air core has an average radius of 15 centimeters, area of cross section 2 centimeters square and 1200 turns. Obtain the self inductance of the toroid. Ignore field variations across the cross section of toroid. So let us draw a toroid first. Let us suppose that this is my toroid. It says that the average radius of the toroid is given as 15 cm which is 15 into 10 to the power minus 2 meters. Area of cross section is 2 into 10 to the power minus 4 meter square and number of turns is equal to 1200. So we have to calculate the self inductance of the toroid, right? So in this case, let before calculating self inductance, we should be able to calculate the flux because once we are able to calculate the total flux in terms of magnetic field, we can very easily find out the self inductance. So what would be the magnetic field inside toroid? It is mu naught n i where n is the number of turns per unit length. So we can write it as this n i divided by length. What is the length of the toroid? Length is nothing but the circumference of this circle. So this will be 2 pi r1. Right? Therefore, what would be the total flux associated with this toroid? The total flux will be equal to n, that is the number of turns, into b into a. Where a is nothing but a1. Right here, n is also n1. This is n1. Right, so this would be the total number of, this would be the total flux. Now we can write it as n1 into mu naught n1 i divided by 2 pi r1 into a1. Right, now we also know that the total flux or the flux linkage is equal to L into i. Right, because the total flux is directly proportional to the current flowing. So that constant of proportionality is self-inductance. So from this, we can say that this Li becomes equal to this total flux which we have obtained. So we can equate both of them. So we can say that Li is, e Li is equal to mu naught n1 square i into a1 divided by 2 pi r1. So this i and i will get cancelled. So this is the expression for your mutual inductance. So mu naught will be 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7. What is n1? n1 is given as 1200. What is a1? It is 2 into 10 to the power minus 4 divided by 2 pi into r1. r1 is 15 into 10 to the power minus 2. So this comes out to be 2.304 into 10 to the power minus 3 Henry. So this would be the self inductance of the toroid. Now let us look at the second part. The second part says that a second coil of 300 turns is wound closely on the toroid above. That means above this toroid there is another coil which is wound closely. Now if the current in the primary coil is increased from 0 to 2 amperes in 0 0.05 seconds, obtain the induced EMF in the second coil, right? So that means here it is talking about mutual inductance now. So let us draw the diagram first. Let us suppose this, was, this is my previous toroid, right? This is my previous toroid. Now let us look at the second part, right? So it says that we have one toroid. So the in earlier initial toroid is already there. On top of this toroid, there is another toroid. Somewhat like this. Right? So we have to calculate the flux induced because of the inner toroid on the outer toroid. Let me name the outer toroid as toroid 2 and the inner one as toroid 1. 
so now the values which which were already given for the inner toroid are the area of the inner toroid is 2 into 10 to the power minus 4 meter square the radius as 15 into 10 to the power minus 2 meter number of turns as 1200 and now for the outer toroid the number of turns is given as 300 and in this case the change in current with time is given so we can calculate the rate of change of current so in this case di2 by dt will be equal to well in this case the change in current is given in the primary coil right so that means di1 by dt is given so so this will be equal to i final minus i initial divided by the small time taken for this change so this is final is 2 amperes, initial was 0 ampere and in what time? 0 0.05, right? So this di by dt comes out to be 40 amperes per second. So this is the rate of change of current in the primary coil. So we have to calculate what is the induced EMF in the outer coil. So what? how much EMF will be induced in the outer coil? Because when current, there is a rate of change of current in the smaller coil, there will be a change in flux of the smaller coil because of which an EMF will be induced in the outer coil. So we have to calculate that EMF. So let us calculate the total flux in the outer coil that is coil 2. So that will be equal to phi 2 which is equal to N2 that is the total number of turns into V1 because the magnetic field is produced by the inner coil into what will be the area because outer coil is bigger right. So it is the same scenario if this is the outer coil and if inner coil is producing the magnetic field. So the area for the outer coil will also be the area of the smaller coil right. So the area will be A1. So this becomes N2 into what is B1? B1 would be nothing but mu naught N1 I1, right? So this into A1. Now we also know that also the total flux phi 2 will be equal to M into I1 because the flux on of 2 will depend on the current flowing through 1. Right. So if you compare this equation and this equation, we can equate the right hand side. Right. Or we can also say that this phi 2 is equal to m i 1. From this we can write that m is equal to n 2 mu 1 mu naught n 1 into a1 because we have equated the right hand sides. So this is the value of the mutual inductance m. Therefore, what is the EMF induced in the second coil? That is equal to M into DI by DT, right? So, this can be written as mu naught N2 N1 A1 into DI1 by DT is nothing but 40 amperes. So, this will be equal to 40. So, mu naught is 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7. N2 is 300. What is N1? N1 is nothing but capital N1 divided by 2 pi R1 into A1 is 2 into 10 to the power minus 4 into 40. So this comes out to be 4 pi into, so this 2 pi will cancel this 4 pi. So we can write it as 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 into 300 into N1 is 1200 into 2 into 10 to the power minus 4 into 40 divided by R1. What is R1? It is 15 into 10 to the power minus 2. So this value comes out to be 0 0.023 volts. So this would be the EMF induced in the second coil. So see if you understand the concepts there are just a couple of uh, um, expressions that you need to use. One is this expression and the other one is calculating phi with with the help of the normal expression for phi or, or as per the definition of phi which is product of magnetic field and area. So here we conclude this lesson on electromagnetic induction. The concepts of electromagnetic induction are uh, extremely important and I really want all of you to go through each of these concepts.
so you remember i told that once i finish the chapter we will quickly go back to the introduction page and we will see the uh, the applications which we talked about uh, how they make use of electromagnetic induction so now let us look at this introduction screen we talked about the induction heater or the induction furnace if you look at the first screen i mean the first application which you see here here you see that the pan is getting heated without even heating the paper do you think it will happen this way if you do it in your burner in your gas burner the paper will burn right but in this case the heat which is getting transferred to the vessel that heat is basically because of the induced current a magnetic field is created somewhere inside such that an induced current is produced and the more the induced current is produced the more is the amount of heat dissipation and that heat is used for all such practical purposes similarly we talked about the strain right we talked about the uh, eddy currents effect in the on the wheels of the train similarly you have magnetic effects even on the doors of the train not only that you have your electric motor and electric generator where you see by just by changing the area or by changing the orientation of the coil with respect to the magnetic field you are able to induce current or uh, even you are able to do the vice versa that is you are able to change mechanical energy to electrical energy and also electrical energy to mechanical energy not only that if you look at this torch it it doesn't use a cell as such which which again needs a maintenance i mean it will not, not last forever what it does it basically uses somewhat like a solenoid i mean it uses a metal core on which you gi give n number of turns of some metal wire so what happens so it behaves like a solenoid where you can induce current by changing the magnetic field because you place a magnet inside it no that because of the presence of that magnet a magnetic field is induced because of which there is an induced current in that solenoid so that is they these are all different ways by which you can fetch um the utility of electromagnetic induction and use it for in your day to day life and that is how electromagnetic induction is a very not only a very interesting topic but also a topic which is of real help in your day to day life even today so many scientists do lot of research to get some practical applications out of this concept of electromagnetic induction so see you all in the next lesson that is alternating currents Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.